Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is house robber. So in this question, it states that a professional robber is planning to rob houses along a street. Each house has certain amount of money stats and the only constant stopping you from robbing each of them is that adjacent houses have security systems connected to it and it will automatically connect the police if two adjacent houses were broken into on the same night. So this is the theory. Coming to the main question, we're given the integer array nums representing the amount of money in each house. We have to return the maximum amount of money we can rob among all the houses without alerting the police. So the police is alerted only if we rob two adjacent houses. So let's take these examples and see how we can solve this question. So let's take the first example given to us. I've written it here. Now we start iterating through the input array from left to right. Let's see what happens if we pick this house. So if we pick this house, our total amount is going to be 1. And then we can't pick the adjacent house because it will alert the police. So if we pick that, we can then pick this. So let's take that house, it will add 3. Then we can't take this house and then we go out of bounds. So with this combination, we get 4 as the output. Now let's see what happens if we don't pick this house, then we pick this house. So then sum is equal to 2. Since we pick this house, we can't pick the next house. And then i moves forward. We pick this house. So we add 1 to it. And then in the next iteration, it goes out of bounds. So we can end the iteration. So the sum is 3 for this example. Now again, if we pick this house, it means we did not pick this house because adjacent house, we can't pick it. So if we pick this house, we might have picked this house. So that is 3. And then we can't pick the adjacent house and we go out of bounds. And there's another option. If we pick this house, there is no compulsion that we might have picked this house. We could have skipped this house too. And then in that case, here it would have been 4. And here in this case, it would have been only 3 and we haven't picked any other house. So here also it is 3. And the same next iteration, we, pick, we picked this house. So it means we did not pick this house. So current sum is equal to 1 plus if we pick this house, we might pick this house. So we get 2 and if we pick this, we cannot pick this. So we'll get 3 in this case. And another case is that if we pick this house, there's no compulsion that we have to pick this house. So we can ignore this. And we can pick this house and these two are also not adjacent. So this combination is 1 plus 1 and we get 2. And the last case is that we pick this house and we haven't picked this house. We haven't picked this house and we haven't picked this house too. Then in that case, the sum is only 1. And out of all this, the sum is 4, which is greater in this both cases, which is the same. So 4 is the output as we picked house number 0 and house number 2. So you might have observed some fact that if we are at a current house, let's say we are at this house. We have the option of picking this house or not picking this house and similarly we have to apply that logic for everything we can pick this or we cannot pick this we can pick this or we cannot pick this we can pick this or we cannot pick this and since we are repeating the same operation on all the elements present inside the array so it says that we are making a recursive call and inside the recursive call we are having two options if we are robbing that house or if we are skipping that house so if we are robbing that house we have to take the current value inside that, right? So nums of i will be added to the sum and we have to move the index two positions forward because we cannot pick the adjacent house. So index will move from i is equal to 0 to i is equal to 2 in this case if you are picking the house. So index plus 2. And similarly, if you are not picking this house, it means we don't take the current value and we just move the index to i plus 1. So index will just move to i plus 1 because we haven't picked that house. So this is the recursive call we have to define. So let's implement these two recursive calls on the second example here and see how we are getting the output. So initially i is equal to 0. So we start here. So we first we have to calculate if we are robbing that house. So if we are robbing that house, we take that current value and move i forward. So we rob this house too and we move i forward. So this is the current index value. And if we are skipping the house, we just move the index forward. So here in this case, the sum is going to be 12 and this value is 12. So until now, max is equal to 12 and we start the same recursive call again with index is equal to 1. So i is equal to 1 now. If you are robbing this house, we add that value and we move index to two steps forward. Then we rob that house and move index forward to two steps and we reach the end. And if you are not robbing the house, we just move the index. So i will move forward. So here in this case, it is 10 and we'll compare it with the max, but max is 12. So max will remain 12. Now here in this case, i is equal to 2. So if we are robbing, we add that value and move i two steps forward and then we rob this value. So again we get 10. And if you are not 
robbing if you are skipping we just move the index forward and this 10 is still less than 12 so max will remain 12 and now i is equal to 3 if you are robbing this house add that value and move i forward and we reach the end and if you are skipping just move i forward and this value is 3 it will be compared with the max variable if it is max and max will remain 12 and in the next iteration we are robbing that house so add that value and move i two steps forward we reach the end if you are skipping again we just move the pointer forward and we reach the end so these recursive calls will keep happening for every index i just showed you the optimal path and there will be more recursive calls happening and finally you get the answer as 12 which is matching here so let's implement these steps in a java program this is the function given to us and this is the input array and we have to return an integer representing the maximum amount of money we have to rob so first let's start off by declaring the recursive function i'm going to name it solve so this will also return an integer and it will take two parameters the input array nouns and also the index from which we are going to rob so i'll name it index now this function will call it inside the main function and we are going to pass in the input array nums and the index from where we are starting we are starting at the index position 0 right and this solve method will return the integer which will be caught here so we can return this as the output so whatever this function returns will be returned as the output for the main function now inside every recursive function we have to write the exit conditions right that is the base condition so we are starting at index 0 so until index reaches the end of the array we are going to iterate once index is greater than end of the array we will return 0 once the index reaches the end so that is why index greater than or equal to once index is equal to length then the index position will be out of bounds then we can return 0 now as we discussed we have two options first we have to calculate what will be the amount if we skip the current house so if we skip the current house we are directly going to move to the next index right so we are going to recursively call this function solve and nums will be the same and index will be the next index so index plus one now what happens if we drop the current index so robbed so we'll get the current indexes value that is nums of index so for example if we are robbing the first house we are going to add that current houses uh, amount so nums of index is added and next we cannot rob this house and next the index will go to current index plus 2 so it will come here so that is why we have to call this function solve on the nums array and index will be index plus 2 and now finally we have to return whatever is returning our maximum so max among these both will be returned as output so return math.max of skipped or robbed and that's it that is the recursive code but if we try to run this the test cases will pass but the actual code will fail because this has recursive calls and there are a lot of repeated calculations so if you try to submit it you'll get time limit exceeded error so here you can see time limit has been exceeded for the long array so that is why now we have to introduce memoization now to introduce memoization you have to check which parameter is being changed inside this function nums is being constant for every recursive call only index is changing so we have to memoize the index now index is the length right so there are 100 houses so let's build a dp array of size 101 because index position start from 0 so I'll globally declare this memo, memo array so I'm going to name it memoization memo and it will be of the length 101 and initially I'm going to fill this memo array with minus ones so here inside in the main function let's use arrays.fill and fill the memo array with the value minus one so all the 101 indexes are going to have minus one initially and now before the recursive call we have to check if we already calculated that value and it is stored inside the memo array so if memo of index if it is not equal to minus one it means we already calculated that value so we can directly retrieve this value and return it instead of doing the recursive call so return memo of index and if that current index is having minus one this condition will be skipped and we can store this value inside the memo array for the next recursive call so memo of index is equal to is equal to this value for the next time we find that value inside this memo array so we are going to store that inside this memo array now let's try to run this the test cases are being accepted now let's submit the code and our solution has been accepted so the time complexity of this approach is o of n where n is the length of the nums array and the space complexity is also o of n 
where n is the length of the nums array because of the n recursive calls the recursive stack will have n entries now let's take a look at approach to using dynamic programming now coming to the dp approach so this is the length of the array right length of the array is equal to 4 so we're going to create a dp array of length 4 plus 1 that is length plus 1 because we have to store dp of 0 2 to build the output and now inside this dp array we have to define the state so dp of i is going to store the optimal value until then how much maximum amount we robbed until that index so until dp of 0 since there is no house at dp of 0 so these are the house numbers and until house 0 we robbed 0 money so dp of 0 is going to be 0 and at house 1 we max can rob so this is house 1 so nums of 0 is the house 1 which will be represented at dp of 1 so dp will be one index forward compared to the nums array so dp of one house means we only have to consider this house so until this house what is the amount we can max rob we can rob only that that house's value that is 1 and now dp of 2 so until house 2 what will be the maximum value now we have to use these values to compute this value so for that we are going to implement these two functions these two jobs again if you are skipping the current dp house that is dp of 2 that is house 1 if you are skipping that house or if you are robbing that house so maximum amount we can rob until this index will be how much money we robbed until that house previous index house so we have to check dp of i minus 1's value if you are robbing that house we have to take that house's value so 2 plus index plus 2 inside recursive call but index minus 2 while calculating dp so if we are considering this house we cannot take the optimal value until here we have to take i minus 2 so we have to check so this formula will correspond to nums of i plus dp of i minus 2 so nums of i is equal to 2 and dp of i minus 2 is dp of 0 which is having 0 so 2 plus 1 is equal to 2 so max of 1 and 2 is equal to 2 so 2 will be taken here and now we have to consider dp of 3 so dp of 3 we have to consider dp of nums of i minus 2 houses so we have to consider these three houses so let's again make the choice if you are skipping that house then we take dp of i minus 1's value so dp of i minus 1's value is 2 so take 2 or if you are robbing that house take the house's value so dp of 3 will have dp of 2's house that is 3 so 3 plus dp of i minus 2 so dp of i minus 2 is having one value which is 4 so 3 plus 1 is 4 max among them is 4 so 4 will be entered at dp of 3 now we move forward now we have to fill dp of 4 so we have to take all the houses into consideration now again we have to make this choice so if you are skipping that house then we have to take dp of i minus 1's value so we have to take 4 or the max value we can rob until then is 4 if we are skipping that and if we are robbing that we have to take that house's value so 1 plus and dp of i minus 2's value because we can't drop the value adjacent to it so we have to take this value so 1 plus 2 is 3 so dp of 4 comma 3 is 4 so 4 will be filled here and now we filled our dp array we have our answer stored inside this dp array and we have to pick the maximum value among them so i'll create a variable max and initialize with the minimum possible value integer dot min value that is minus 2 power 31 minus 1 and we iterate through the dp array from left to right and we compare each value inside that and pick the maximum value maximum value is 4 max will be updated as 4 and we return max as the output so 4 is the output for this question which is matching here now implement the same steps and fill the dp array for example 2 so fill the dp array of length size plus 1 and do a dry run using the same example if you are skipping and if you are robbing take the maximum among these two and fill the dp entries so initially dp of 0 is going to be 0 and dp of 1 is going to be the value of the first house 2 and now from here onwards fill the dp arrays and let me know in the comments if you're getting 12 as the output and now let's take a look at the dp code now as discussed we have to implement this using dynamic programming for that we are going to use a 1d dp array of size nums dot length plus 1 because we are also going to store dp of 0 so let's declare the array i'm going to name it dp and it will be of the length nums dot length plus 1 and initially like we discussed we need two sub problems so dp of 0 is going to be 0 and dp of 1 is going to be the first element inside the nums array which is nums of 0 
and now we start filling the dp array from index 2 so let's use a for loop which starts from i equal to 2 until nums dot length index so i is less than or equal to nums dot length and now let's start filling the dp array so dp of i is equal to the maximum of mat dot max of the again the same values if we are skipping the house then we are going to check if skipped then we are going to take dp of i minus 1 that is the previous house's optimal value and if we are robbing the current house then we are going to take the nums of i minus 1 value because i is equal to 2 and to match that with the nums index we have to do nums of i minus 1 and we are going to take dp of i minus 2's value because we can't take the adjacent house's maximum value up until then so dp of i minus 2 and, and we have to pick the maximum among these two values robbed and skipped so skipped comma robbed and now the dp array is filled for the entire for using the entire for loop and now inside this dp array we have to find the maximum element so let me create a variable max and initialize it with the minimum possible value and now we iterate through the dp array from starting to end so let's use a for loop where starts where i starts from 0 until the end of the dp array and we'll keep updating the max variable using mat.max of current max variable value and dp of i which is the current element inside the dp array and after this for loop ends we'll have our max variable as the output so we have to return max as the output now let's try to run the code the test cases are being accepted let's submit the code and a solution has been accepted so the time complexity of this approach is o of n because we are using a for loop to iterate through the input array nums so n is the length of the input array and the space complexity is also o of n because we are using a dp array to store our output and then retrieve the maximum element among the dp array that's it guys thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video